just finally I want to talk about the EU election, because this, this is really crucial. We are a small party at the moment, but this could be, this EU election could really be the catalyst to getting both us, the National Health Action Party, but much more importantly, the NHS, the issue of the NHS, right at the top of the political agenda, right next to the economy, which is absolutely crucial for the, for the next election. Because if the public find out what's going on, the Tories are finished for a generation, the Liberal Democrats will be almost completely dissolved. Uh, they'll have to form a different organisation. And actually, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to keep the NHS for generations to come. And the way the system works in, in this election, we would need about 200,000 votes to get one of our candidates, 400,000 to get two candidates, so on. And, and there's a 5 million voting population in London. You know, this is eminently doable. So if you get there, get out on the streets, tell your friends, get out there, help our fantastic candidates that we're going to get introduced to. We can really make a big impact. And we're already being listened to by the health journalists in the national newspapers. We're getting on, we're getting on TV. If we get this Euro MP, one or two, we can make a huge difference. So please back us. Thanks very much for, for coming along today. And let's stick up for the NHS. Thank you. to my new best friend, uh, who is, uh, I've met the second time today, um, Mr. Rufus Hound. Give him a warm uh, round of applause. This is my son, Albie. He will mainly be doing uh, what I'm saying through the medium of interpretive dance. Uh, I'm not really sure why you're here. You've just sort of walked up with me. Yes, but that's all right. Stay, stay. That's... You all right with that? I feel like you should have your own little microphone. We can do a sort of got a gear, you know, do a little ventriloquist act or something. Lovely. Hello, uh, my name's Rufus. I'm uh, running on behalf of the NHA in the European elections, but I'm here uh, mainly at the moment to uh, MC this event, which, uh, I'll be honest, I work in the West End Theatre, so it's unusual to see a crowd here. Uh, uh, look, we're just going to keep things rolling along at this point. Uh, the first person speaking to us is somebody who already has previous when it comes to bloodying the nose of people seeking to harm uh, the healthcare provision for the people it was set up to, uh, to, to aid. So please uh, make your hands heard, your voices leap from your throats, and please welcome Louise Irwin. I'm not sure how well I can read it in the, what seemed like a kind of nightclub setting, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, well, I think most people here are here because they understand that the NHS is under threat, as never before, um, and a threat to its very existence as a public service. And across the whole of England, we're seeing NHS services being privatised. Um, in fact, the uh, most scandalous thing I read recently were there's a contract for nearly a billion pounds for cancer care and for end of life care being put out to tender now um, in the north of England. So this is the sort of thing that we're seeing more and more um, contracts being put out and about 70% of them are being won by private corpor corporations. And we know about the cuts, we know about the closures and we know about the whole service being run down. Meanwhile, this government washes its hands of this, and that's partly because with the Health and Social Care Act, the government no longer, the Secretary of State for Health, no longer has a duty to provide a comprehensive healthcare service. You're seeing um, now people like Jeremy Hunt saying things like, um, it's got nothing to do with me, take it up with NHS England, as if they are no longer responsible for our health service. And the pro-government think tanks are floating the idea of user charges. It's starting to come up more and more. Reform, the King's Fund, other organisations. The government still denies that it's going to bring that in, but you, you know the direction of travel is towards people having to pay, people talking about paying for A&E, paying for the GP, paying for overnight care in hospital. Um, this is, the, I think, what's going to happen if this government, if the Tories get re-elected. Just as they didn't tell you what they were going to do with the bringing in the Health and Social Care Act and the privatisation of the NHS before the last election, they're not telling you that what they plan to do if they get re-elected is to actually bring in 
a two-tier system where people will be expected to pay um, top up um, for their health care and we'll be moving towards an insurance-based system. And the thing that worries me most is this, as a doctor is this talk about reconfiguration, which is really a smokescreen for hospital closures. And when you hear reconfiguration, it sounds kind of sensible. Well, why can't you just reorganize things to modernize and update and just rearrange services um, to take account of changes in, in patterns of healthcare and illness? But that's not what's really happening. It's actually a hospital closure program. It's a liquidation of our NHS assets across the country. Every single reconfiguration includes a significant net loss of beds. The capacity for the NHS to provide care is being shrunk before our eyes. And hospitals are being earmarked for demolition to be sold off. And especially in London, for luxury flats seems to be the, the main purpose. They were going to try, try to sell 60% of Lewisham Hospital site um, to make money to pay off the debt of um, the neighbouring South London Healthcare Trust. Um, how is this affecting London? In London, there are nine hospitals, either have just lost their A&E and maternity or under threat of losing it, nine hospitals, which will effectively close as district general hospitals. They're mainly in deprived areas of London. And they will mean that people living there will have much further to travel to access their health care. I was in Ealing and South Hall yesterday campaigning. We, we went around four shopping centres. There was an amazing response, actually, from people um, who were very concerned about the NHS. But um, what strikes me is that that area, North West London, is set to lose four out of nine of its hospitals. Then we've got South West London, where St. Helier Hospital is under threat. We've got North East London, where... King George's Hospital is due to close in 2015 and the patients will all have to transfer to Queen's Hospital which is a PFI hospital. It's a familiar story. The PFI hospital is saved um, because you can never close those PFI hospitals but other hospitals are then closed to funnel patients into the, the PFI hospital. Queen's was built to handle 90,000 patients a year in its a &E. is currently handling 140,000 when King George's closes, there are no plans to increase its capacity. We see what, what happened when Chase Farm Hospital has closed. It's putting terrible pressure on Barnet Hospital. We're hearing stories now of ambulances taking sometimes two hours to pick up um, a seriously ill patient. Why? Because the ambulances are tied up, queuing outside hospitals, unable to deposit their patients, to transfer their patients. Patients are backing up in a &E. There are no beds for them. Um, patients can't be discharged from hospital because of 20% cuts in social services. So there's a crisis at every level. And now we're hearing about GP practices. I'm a GP, um, and for the first time in my lifetime of work, I, you know, GPs have gone up and you know, had, had them, um, trials and tribulations and their good days and their bad days, but we always thought there would just be, there would be GP practices there. We're hearing of really good practices in London under threat of closure because of underfunding. Um, I could go on. But this is all about, I think, running down our NHS and softening up public opinion for the solution. What's the solution? Let's privatise it because of so-called private sector efficiencies and let's start charging for it because that's put as the only way to really save our NHS. We need to counter all those arguments and Clive has already in his speech talked about some of our, how we counter it. The NHS is not unsustainable. It is underfunded. We could afford to spend much more on our NHS and still be behind 14 comparable Western economies and how much we spend on our health care. Privatisation costs more, not less, because the market costs billions to, to, to manage. It's a false economy to cut 6,000 nursing jobs and then, and then complain that you, you can't have the quality. To have quality care, we need staff who are supported, valued, properly paid and sufficient numbers. I think most people in this room know most of what I'm saying and the question is how do we go beyond this room, go out into the community. When you talk to people and explain to them what's happening, they are as concerned as we are, but mostly they don't know. The media has not covered this issue in any depth and so, and the main parties are silent. I think the Labour Party has been especially um, quiet on this issue. Andy Burnham says 
some good things, but we don't know to what extent he actually represents the Labour leadership Amen. and to what extent he would actually even be um, the Secretary of State for Health if, if, if Labour got, got re-elected. So we, we need to hear it from the Labour Party. We need them to accept that they need to reverse the cuts and, and fund the NHS properly. They need to deal with the PFI issue and they need to really back up what they're saying about ending... Um, privatisation. They're saying they want the NHS to be the preferred provider, but that's still within a market system. It's the market system which is the problem, and they need to commit to ending that market system. Um, so, people ask me, well, the National Health Action Party, you're just a small party, what impact can you hope to have? I think, we have to be honest, we, we don't think we're ever going to be pressure group using the electoral process as a way of actually reaching out to more people. We have much more access to the media by standing in elections. Elections are a time when people are more interested or there are more articles, there's more stuff around, there's more stuff in the radio and the television about political issues. So we want to use that sort of increased um, alertness and awareness to actually get some messages, very powerful messages across about the NHS. If we got a big vote, though, it would actually be a kind of referendum on the NHS in London. It would show the main parties that people are beginning to wake up to what's happening and really care about the NHS. The Tories have gone quiet on the NHS. I don't know if you've noticed that, but Linton Crosby, who's their attack dog that they've brought in from Australia, has said, look, if you talk about the NHS, it's always bad for, for, for you, for the Tory party, so stay quiet. We're even getting a charm offensive. Uh, we're getting Jeremy Hunt sending nice letters round to health workers saying how much he loves them and how much he values them. <laughs> there was a recent one in the front page of one of the papers that we get, the GP's directed to the ambulance um, service. Did you know that? He, he, lo he really loves you. So, um, um, you know, so they want to, they're going quiet on it. Labour is quiet on some of the really important issues. It's not speaking loudly and boldly and strongly enough. It wants to avoid the topic. So we are the people that are going to bring this up and make it an election issue. We get a good vote now in the Euro elections. It sets us up really well towards the general election. If we get someone elected, which is not impossible, as Clive said, I think that would be a game changer. I think that would change the political landscape. It would show that this is a number one issue for the people. <laughs> So, um, you know, UKIP are doing well, they, they're apparently they're on 30% because to some extent there are protests for people are fed up with the main parties, they're looking around. We don't want people just to waste their vote on some kind of meaningless protest. We want people to vote for us in a positive way, not just to protest, but to vote for something positive that they really believe in. And in the Euro elections, it's proportional representation, no vote is wasted, every vote counts. So that's the message we want to, to get out. I, I spent the whole of yesterday and Friday, and loads of other people have been spending time out in the street talking to people. It'd be lovely if everybody here takes a pile of leaflets when they go and thinks about doing their local school, their local station, or their local hospital, or their workplace, and, and, and starts engaging with people about this issue. Thank you.